Hello everyone, in this week's video we're going to be talking about perspective in architecture photography. Let's do this. So today we're going to be looking at two major perspective techniques that you can use in your uh, architectural photography. When you enter a space, you might want to emphasize a certain point of the building by entering perspective, using perspective to your advantage to show off the best of that architectural you know, environment. So let's take it one step further back. The main difference between a one-point and a two-point perspective in any form of photography is the amount of vanishing points you have on the horizon in the frame. So, for example, here on the camera view, you can see that I'm looking down this hallway, this corridor and this mansion, and we're looking at a one-point perspective which feeds your eye right to the back of the room. But that vanishing point can sit anywhere on the frame. So just because it's a, a one-point, you don't always have to have it in the centre. So what exactly is a vanishing point? Well, there can be more than one on the image, uh, like I've just explained, where there's a two-dimensional parallel lines in a three-dimensional space, and they converge to a single point. An easy way to visualise this is by standing in the middle of the street, be safe please, and watching how the parallel lines slowly converge together in the middle of your field of view. Architecture photography is the best niche of photography, of course, uh, when you're looking at uh, distinct lines, shapes, uh, playing with the geometry and, and what it can do to your compositions and, and form. The lines within architecture as well uh, make it possible to move your vanishing point around. So it doesn't always have to be in the centre of a frame just because that's how you've, uh, you look at it naturally. You're looking down here, it's in the centre of the, of, the, of the building. But you could move that and put that placement anywhere within your composition. This type of perspective, of course, is used mainly for like, things like rail tracks, where you shouldn't be shooting, by the way, buildings and balconies like this, uh, and also in places like hallways, where you look down naturally and your eye leads to one point on the horizon. Any objects that are made up of lines either directly parallel with the viewer's line of sight or directly perpendicular, the railroad slats as an example, can be represented by a one-point perspective. These parallel lines converge at the single vanishing point. So once we understand this, we can understand that the one-point perspective then is one of the strongest techniques and tools that you can use to really rapidly increase the quality of your photography, especially in architecture photography. So it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a photographer, it could be an artist, a painter that's using this kind of technique to pull the viewer's eye through the frame. So I'd say that maybe 80% of my work on my website and, and in, in features that I've had on magazines and stuff has, has been using the one-point perspective in one form or another. In fact, if you go across any architecture magazine, website, uh, and even interior design magazines and stuff like this, you'll find that a lot of the work in there is probably a similar ratio that makes up their, you know, their spread. Um, architects will even use this uh, impression in their drawings when they're first visualising a building or a space uh, to kind of before it's even going to design or to build. And that means then if you're an architecture photographer, you really need to know about it and be pulling it off because if that's what they've envisioned, then you need to be capturing that because ultimately that's the live vision of what they've drawn, right? Okay, so I've set up a shot here and I've done exactly the same composition on the video camera so that you can see the parallel lines converging a little bit easier. Now, I've got exactly the same composition on here apart from we're at 24 mil on a full frame. There we're probably at an 18 mil on the video camera, but you're getting roughly the same. In fact, my camera there in the view is pretty much in the center. If you watch what your eye's doing, it's leading you straight through to my camera actually on the video camera. Look, if I stand out, that's the thing that you're looking at. Just because we've got the one point perspective um, idea in our mind, it doesn't mean that the one point on the horizon needs to be in the center of the frame. I could move the video camera now to the left, to the right, and within this, you're gonna be able to still have that one point perspective. Let's try that now. Okay, so I've moved off to one side, and we've still got a one point perspective, but look at the video camera, it's off through the side. So it's creative thinking of where we've positioned the video camera to show this space off a bit differently, but it's still a one point on the horizon, so it's still a one point perspective. The thing that this view does do is it emphasizes the tiles, the lines, um, the columns of the building and the facade as well, and leads your eye through. And this is why this is one of the strongest techniques that you can use. And then we've got another one. This time we've got exactly the same. We've 
got the camera off to one side, we're still a one point perspective leading down the balcony and I'm off to one side and of course if I'm out of the way you can still see it. Okay, so what you're looking at now is straight out of my DSLR. This is the view of what I've composed in camera. However, what we could do, and my point here is, just because we've got the one point perspective, I'm using the tilt shift lens here and I could actually raise up my shot and we still, even if I was to frame it there, or even if I was to frame it down further down here, we're still getting the one point perspective, but it's not set in the center of our framing. And this is why all of these, no matter what you do here, is a one point perspective. So if you're photographing architecture, you can push yourself into the corner of the building, open your lens up wide, uh, and then push the viewer's eye left and right. The only issue is I've got in this mansion is the view, the subject matter is a bit ugly. We're put, the middle of the frame is just a, a plain wall. This particular mansion, the best view really is a one point perspective because it, it gives you all that ceiling details, the murals and, and the facades and stuff. But we're gonna try it off and show it anyway so you understand what I'm talking about. But this is the thing, giving you both of these options uh, can really open your eyes up to uh, make sure you're choosing the right shot selection for you when you're on location at a certain spot. Okay, so you can see what I've lined up here in camera. It looks decent enough, but it's this section here that's pretty ugly. Um, again, I'm just using a traditional lens here. This is just a 16 to 35. I'm opening it up and you can see both sides of the corridor. So it works quite well. Uh, and that's kind of what I was trying to explain. You know, if we ended up cropping that too far in, it would just look a bit much, but opening it right up here, you've got this side and this side. So in an ideal world, this would be a beautiful subject. Um, and then here you would have you know, you'd have like, this is your, the way your, you know, your eyes drawn and then it goes away this way and then away this way. So yeah, that's the idea. So again, another technique that's really useful in architecture photography, uh, mainly because the reason is that, that, like I said a minute ago, the geometric shapes and the lines and the patterns, this opening up, this twin corridor feeling, uh, it really gives a bit of drama to your shots. Okay, so here are a few examples of images that I've done in the past using the two-point perspective. It works really well with corridors, like I've said before. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks on perspective. Um, I hope you found them useful. Please do leave some comments below if you've something I've missed or if you've got any questions. Um, by the way, I'm leaving Batumi in two weeks time and heading back to Tbilisi before jumping on a plane and for a month we're in Lebanon. Uh, I've got a project I need to finish off. Uh, um, you can't actually see any of what was going on there on the YouTube channel straight away. It's probably not going to release any videos probably until the autumn on that. And there'll be videos done there, but it won't be of the project. However, if you do want to see what's going on, I've got special access via my Ko-fi page uh, to subscribers or to indeed one-off contributors uh, to the project, which is a book project overall. Um, anyone that does join up to that page, the, the pr proceeds from this point on are going to go to uh, the Beirut Heritage Foundation, which is a foundation and a trust that I'm uh, working with while I'm over in Beirut. Uh, they're helping to start, sort of fix uh, mansions that were damaged in the blast back in August 2020. If you do want to contribute, you can check that out. And when you do that, it then gives you exclusive access to my videos and behind the scenes content that I'll only be producing for the Kofi page while I'm in Lebanon. Um, I will be shooting content for my YouTube channel, but it won't be released until the project as a whole is in, in October, probably ish of uh, this year. Um, so yeah, please feel free. The links are in the description below if you want to check them out. I'll also put them up here on the screen. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please do subscribe, share this video with a friend if you found it useful. And until next time, until next Monday, see you soon. Bye-bye.